I think the Lima Class 117 must have been one of their earlier models. It certainly doesn't have the level of detail that subsequent Locos or DMUs did. In addition, unfortunately both powered and unpowered cars are driving motor brake seconds DMBS, and have compartments for luggage and the guard. One of the vehicles should be a driving motor second DMS without this compartment. I am happy to overlook this and in any case the real units normally ran as three car sets whereas mine will only have two. However it is a good representation of the real thing and models can still be picked up for reasonable prices at auctions or swap meets. The interior looks good at normal viewing distances as does the underframe detail although the latter can be further improved by some judicious painting and weathering. The wheels look a little small and have large flanges and the buffer beam detail is sketchy to say the least. On later models such as the Class 101 the windows are flush and fit neatly in the window apertures but on this model the glazing is merely a single perspex moulding fitted inside the body. My intention is to try and improve the model by making some simple modifications. Projects include removing the front couplings, adding extra detail to the buffer beams and adding extra pickups to the trailing bogey on the powered car. I also intend to paint and weather the underframes and ends and of course try to do something about the glazing. To that end I have purchased some southeastern fine cast flush glazing. I will video the various things as we go along and hope that at the end a better class 117 will result. As will become obvious as the video progresses I have never used flush glaze windows before nor even dismantled a Lima class 117 but bear with me I will record my thoughts, the problems I encounter and the mistakes I make along the way. Now let's begin. The flush glaze windows as supplied by Southeastern Finecast. I don't know if you can see these but opening the pack reveals the windows themselves. I've never used these before and I'm already beginning to think I should have started with something rather more simpler like perhaps a loco that only has a few windows to glaze. If I need to use all of these there are 68 per coach and as I've got a two car DMU that's going to mean 136 windows to cut out and fit Oh. oh well, let's start. The first stage is to disassemble one of the coaches. Southeastern fine cast include in the pack a small piece of paper showing how to remove the body. First of all, remove the exhaust pipes and silencers from the end of the coach. Hopefully they are a push fit and can be removed easily. Then remove the corridor connections. I'm hoping that they also are a push fit. The bogies are held on by fixing lugs and the coach chassis is held on by two fixing screws. A close up of the end of the coach showing the silencers and the corridor connections which need to be removed. As anticipated the exhaust pipes and silencers are merely a push fit and can be gently eased off with a small screwdriver. The second silencer is similarly removed. 
Now the corridor connection. This is a lot more stuck on than the silencers. I want to be careful not to damage the coach or the corridor connection by applying too much pressure. then if you can see fixing lugs and holes in the end of the coach I'm not quite sure why we need to remove that but we'll find out perhaps later next I'm going to undo the screws that hold the chassis to the body just noticed that at this end of the coach there is a lug that was hidden by the corridor connection. I suspect that needs to be pushed in before removing the coach end. Ah. Okay. So it was as simple as pushing in the lug at this end and then gently hinging the body off. The seating unit is fixed to the chassis simply by fixing lugs along the side. At this stage I don't think we need to take the seating out so I will leave the chassis as it is for the time being and not remove the bogies. Having removed the body from the chassis, it's now time to take out the glazing. I don't know how this is fixed in. I'm hoping it's not going to be glued every other window, otherwise taking it out is going to be rather difficult. The glazing unit is a one-piece unit goes all the way around the coach and the front as well ah and seems to be just a push fit into the coach the windows in the end of the coach are a separate fitting I don't know whether these are glued in or whether these are push fit gently prizing them I don't want to use them again but I equally don't want to break them ah there we are simply push out from the front of the unit and that completes the easy part the disassembly of one of the coaches, the non-powered one. I assume the powered coach will be much the same, so to save boring you, I won't video that, unless of course there are any differences. I have just counted the window openings in the non-powered car and found that there are 39. This is still a large number, but a lot less than I had previously thought. I am not a fan of speeded up videos and a video of me cutting out and gluing in 39 windows would be extremely tedious but I will photo and video each stage as I go along. The destructions that come with the pack say that it is important to remove all plastic flash from the inner edge of the body window openings otherwise the new windows may not seat properly. They recommend a sharp scalpel for this purpose.
reading the instructions again they state cut out the windows as required and trim them leaving a one millimeter edge all round this seemed a little small so I measured the gaps between the windows on the coach unfortunately most of them are only two millimeters apart so I guess I'm gonna have to be very careful with the measuring and cutting I'm going off this idea already I'm going to try Deluxe Materials Glue and Glaze as this is designed specifically for glazing windows. Some solvents should be avoided as they leave a frosted appearance across the window which is something we wish to avoid. Before starting to cut out any windows it is essential to familiarise yourself with the different shapes and sizes of the windows and the quantities of each on the coach. Looking at the side of the coach, there are a number of different sized windows, some of which are actually very similar. Starting at the front, there is a small driver's window. And then there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven door windows. At this stage I'm not quite sure whether the driver's door window is the same as the other windows. We will see. Behind the driver's door there is one large window. This is a different shape and size from anything else. Behind the first passenger door there are one, two, three, four slightly smaller large windows. If we look at the middle of the coach and work towards the rear, there are one, two, three, four medium sized windows. And if we look at the luggage compartment at the rear, there is one medium sized window. The three windscreens on the front of the unit are different from any other windows. I mentioned earlier that the instructions recommend using a scalpel to remove paint around the window frames but I think to get a smoother finish I'm going to use some small files. A flat one and a round one for the corners. I've cut out some of the windows and I've shown them here. There are very few spares in the pack and some of the mouldings were actually unusable so it's essential that as few as possible are damaged during the cutting process. It's very easy to put too much pressure on the windows when cutting out and when inserting them into the coach sides. When cutting, try to hold parts of the moulding that won't be seen to avoid distorting the parts that will be seen. If you are a bit heavy handed like me, it's almost inevitable that some distortions, particularly in the window corners, will appear. However, some of these can be very gently eased out by careful rubbing with a cocktail stick. On some of the windows, where possible, I have left a 2mm edge at either the top and or the bottom of the windows. This should assist fixing and gluing them into the coach sides. Although it looks the same, I think that the window aperture in the guard section is a slightly different size to any of the others and I could not find a suitable window in the pack to fit. A lot of filing of the aperture was required, taking care not to file into the visible part of the window surrounds. I finally managed to fit the window but it's not one of my most successful on side one. As a trial I have glued in two windows, one large and a smaller one in case there are any problems before I tackle the whole coach. They are temporarily glued in at the top only and once I'm happy with them I will run some more glue along the bottom edges as well. A first look at the two windows from the outside of the coach. I'm quite pleased with the appearance of them. So that's two down 
Only 37 to go. I purchased two packs of glazing as there are two cars in my set and I was somewhat surprised to find that the selection of windows in the second pack was slightly different to that of the first. Whether there will be enough for both cars remains to be seen. I will let you know later. I have now glued all the windows into car one. I did one side first and left it for a day to thoroughly dry out. I then tackled the second side together with the front windscreens. Originally the body was held onto the chassis at the front by the cab glazing unit. We no longer require the windscreen part of this but we do need the lower section containing the lights and the slot where it fits over the chassis. I am therefore going to cut off the lower section of the unit and glue it into the front of the coach under the new windows. That should ensure the body can still clip onto the chassis. Unfortunately the cutting didn't go quite as planned and I have ended up with two parts for the lower unit. I don't think this should matter as the two pieces can be glued into the front of the coach but it just shows how even the simplest of jobs can go wrong. The lower section glued into the front of the DMU. It's not elegant but I hope it will do. There is a fine tip applicator supplied with the glue and glaze but I thought I might end up dispensing too much glue with it. Instead I applied it sparingly using a cocktail stick. This gave me much finer control and ensured that the glue only went where I wanted it to. The glue seems to have worked well. It holds the windows nicely in place and dries to a clear finish so it's not too obvious where I have applied too much. After all the filing that was necessary to ensure the windows had a snug fit, the actual gluing into the side of the coach was comparatively easy and didn't take very long at all. I am very pleased with the results so far and think that the new windows are a great improvement over the old. However, this video is already getting rather long so I will split it into two parts and end part one here. The second part will include more modifications and improvements and hopefully produce a great looking model. So that's all for now and see you next time.